Hey guys, and welcome to Devlog 10 of the Animal Behavior Kit. Today, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at what I've been working on for the past week or so. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't had too much time this week, super busy, but I did get in a couple of hours of work and I created some spawners. So, uh, two things I want to look at today is a food spawner and an animal spawner. Um, the food spawner is actually really, really cool. Uh, even at, uh, last night, I, I was uh, finishing up some of the work, and I'm super excited uh, to show it to you. So, if you guys recall, um, several videos you've seen, right? With the need system, the AI uh, will usually, obviously, get thirsty and get hungry. And if the AI is a prey or, a, or an omnivore or herbivore, uh, the food will be, obviously, some kind of plant, right? So, right now... The way it works is I have a food AI blueprint. Uh, it's an actual blueprint. You can put it in the world, and it's just represented by a box. And that box is used by the AI to look for the nearby food and go there and eat the food, right? But obviously, the whole idea is that you would put that food actor overlapping your actual food mesh, right? So in the content starter in the pack from Epic, you have this little bush called SM bush. Um, and I'm gonna use this as an example here as to this is the food for the deer, right? So let's say that uh, you put in your food, which is gonna be represented by this uh, bushes here. And what you would do is you would actually look for food AI. So let's see, it'll be this guy right here. So you have to drag it to the scene and I'm gonna focus here and you can see here that if I just place this guy here in the scene, oops, right here, um, <clears throat> and I have the AI use the um, need system, the AI, when it gets hungry, is going to look for this actor right here in the world, uh, is going to come here, and it's going to look like it's eating from the bush, right? But this is a very inefficient way of doing it. And in my sample map, I have a few of these AI uh, food actors all over the map, and that works fine, right? Uh, but in the real world, when you're making your own game, you're probably going to have a lot of meshes that are represented as bushes, right? Maybe it's a fruit tree or whatever. Uh, so the, the fact that you're gonna have to manually drag and duplicate all of these meshes uh, is gonna be extremely time consuming. So what I've done is I created a little spawner and it's called food spawner. You can see this guy right here. And what he does is he goes through your level and spawns the uh, food AI blueprint all over your level. Uh, and the way it works is, oops, it's not that guy, but this guy right here, food spawner. And the way it works is it looks for all of the actors in your scene that have a tag. And in this case, I made the tag AI food. Uh, and if you go to this bush here and you look for tags, you'll notice that I added the same tag to all of these different uh, bushes here. So this guy is going to go through your scene, look for uh, actors that have this tag, and then it will spawn the, um, the food AI. So if I were to just, uh, you know, put this tag, and in this case, um, I am going to look for static meshes. Uh, foliage is gonna be the next one. And I click on spawn food, You'll see that automatically, this is a little blue utility, it'll automatically look for all of the meshes that have this tag, and it'll spawn the food uh, by using the transform. It's going to be the location and rotation. And notice that in this case, this bush is twice as big as this one. The scale is bigger. So it automatically adjusts the scale of the box here, uh, which is really neat. <clears throat> Right. You still may have to manually, I mean, these are manual uh, actors, right? So you may have to manually adjust it, but it at least makes the attempt to adjust to the scale of the actor here, right? You also have the ability to obviously delete it. Maybe um, you messed up or you want to change something. You can always go back to the food spawner and click on delete food. That's the button right here. And you'll see that everything just goes away. So it spawns it, it keeps it in an array as a reference and you can go ahead and delete it, right? That's cool, right? Uh, but then the next step was, well, this is still an individual actor, right? A static mesh actor that you're putting in your world. And normally you wouldn't do that. You would actually use foliage because uh, this is just not very efficient. If you have a massive world, you're not going to manually place 
bushes in your world, you're going to use something like the foliage tool. And that's the example that I have right here. So if I click on any of these trees, you'll see that all of these guys are foliage. And I have uh, two meshes. I have the little bush, SM bush, and I have SM pine tree. Uh, and you can see that I can just paint pine trees here, right? Whoops, let's just eliminate that. And I can set, do the same thing for the bushes here, right? Now, <clears throat> that's cool. Uh, now, the idea is I want to use foliage to spawn my food. Uh, and this is where the interesting part comes in. If you notice, when I'm clicking on the foliage, I can't actually find the foliage actor on the world outliner. It's actually hidden for some reason. Uh, so it's kind of trying to figure out um, how can I access this, um, this actor to get the instances so I can then spawn my food AI. Uh, and it turns out that you can't see it here, but you can access it programmatically. So I did the same thing. I added a tag. You can actually, even though you can't see it here, if you select it, you'll see that on the details panel, it's called instance foliage actor, and you can actually add a tag. And I made, I added the same tag, AI food. And now if you go here to the food um, spawner, you have the ability to also consider foliage or both, right? You can, you can do both. But in this case, I only want to focus on the foliage and then now I'm going to uh, go through and um, spawn on all the foliage. But again, you have two types of foliage in this case, or you may have three or four or five, right? If you have a really complex scene, you may have a bunch of different trees. Usually you wouldn't want the food um, for the AI to be every single tree. M normally you would have it as a specific foliage mesh. So in this case, again, I'm trying to think, how would you build your game, right? In this case, say that you say, well, I want all of the bushes, SM bush, to be food, but I don't want the pine trees to be food, right? So how would you do that? So I found, after a lot of trial and error, a way to access all of the instances here, categorize them, and then giving you the option of selecting which specific foliage type you want to use to spawn it. Uh, so this is, again, really, really cool. Um, Super simple, but again, it makes your life a lot easier. So imagine this is the entire level, right? You have a massive foliage. And the first thing you'll do is you make sure that you select foliage, you add the tag, and then you click on get foliage info. And as soon as I do that, notice that I automatically, programmatically build a map with the name of each foliage type and a Boolean here. So right now we have SM Bush and SM pine tree. And by clicking get foliage info, this blue utility went away and, and got that you indeed have an SM bush and an SM pine tree. And this um, check here means that you want to spawn food on that specific uh, static mesh. So right now I have both. If I click on spawn food, you'll notice that it spawns a food actor on all of the meshes in your foliage. How cool is that? Uh, so huge time saver. Now let's say that you messed up. You say, actually, no, I don't want it there. You can go ahead and delete the food there and you can go back to your menu and say, actually, I only want the food to be the bush. So you can deselect pine tree, click on spawn food. And now you'll see that all of the pine trees, uh, well, this bush was right here, unfortunately, but you can see all of the pine trees are left alone and only the bushes are are used for uh, for spawning the food you can go ahead again and delete it and you can do the opposite so like no i only want the food to spawn on the pine trees and you can see there that is then spawned only on the pine trees so i was pretty proud of myself i think this is really cool because it'll save you a huge amount of time uh, and it's a lot more realistic so the workflow would be you would uh, draw your foliage. You would select one or more meshes in your foliage that you wanted to represent food. Then you use the food spawner, make sure that you get the foliage info, and then you can select here in this uh, menu, in this map, which uh, meshes are going to be used to spawn the food. So you spawn the food, 
and as soon as you drop the AI here, this will automatically work out of the box. It'll find the closest uh, food source when it gets hungry and on it goes. So um, yeah, really cool stuff. I uh, was pretty proud of myself. So I hope you, you see the value here. This could potentially save you hours if you have a massive level. I'm go ahead and delete this. Um, so that's really, really cool. I also have a, um, an animal spawner which is very similar. If you've seen some of the old videos for my arcade space shooter template, this is very similar, right? Um, it's the same idea. I'm thinking about performance. So when you build your level, you drop all of your AI animals, right? And you can even use the population system, population control system to spawn uh, or kill, re uh, increase or reduce the population of certain animals. All of that you've seen. Uh, but there is one more method that I wanted to include for performance purposes, and that is just a generic animal spawner, right? So if you click on the options here, you'll see that there are two spawn methods. You can do spawn on begin play or spawn on the overlap trigger. Then you can, this is an array, you can have as many animal types as you want to spawn. So in this case, I want to spawn a, uh, a female deer. I want to spawn three. And I want their behavior to go to random location within bounds, which is this um, volume here. And then I have the option of including the reference to the bounds here in some settings. So not only will you be able to spawn your AI, but you can give them all of the behavior options right here. Uh, and the same thing, I also have another, which is the male deer, and I want only two. Same behavior, go to random location within bounds and I reference the, the bounds here. Um, so if I click on begin play, and I have another ones here, but if I if I simulate and click on begin play, oh, and uh, another thing here, you can, you can specify the spawn delay. So every two seconds, it'll spawn one member and it'll go through the entire array. So if I put two seconds and I click on simulate, you'll see that one Doe is spawned, another doe is spawned, and every two seconds, one will spawn. Uh, and now the, 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 the males are spawning, and now as soon as it's done, uh, it stops. So this is really cool because you can quickly populate an area without having to manually hand place a bunch of your animals, right? Instead of hand placing the actual class, you can, you can drop uh, an animal spawner, you can quickly... Uh, tell it what class you want to spawn, some of the settings, and you can move on, right? Uh, but really, the, 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 the real utility here is that you have the ability to use a trigger, an overlap trigger, right? So if I go ahead and click on show trigger, I've already, obviously, for the demo, pre-scaled it here. So there's a, it's a bot collision here. Uh, and in this mode, this will only spawn when the player overlaps the trigger. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to just play, click on selected viewport. And if I eject, you'll notice, actually, let me just pause this one here, deactivate it. We only want to look at this one. And if I click on play here and I eject, you'll see that nothing is happening, right? As soon as I hit the trigger, which is around this corner here, and I eject, you'll see that now we have a bunch of deer that are spawning and every two seconds, a new deer will spawn. And that's the beauty of it, right? For performance reasons, you may not want animals just running around your scene, right? Even if you have an open world, if you have specific areas of your level that are gated or the player can't see, like in this case, obviously I put a little wall there, uh, you can just put a, a an enemy spawner with a trigger and not even have the animal um, spawned at all, right? Only when the player gets close will the animal spawn. And remember, there's a setting on the animal AI that if the player is really, really far, it'll automatically deactivate and it'll just stay static in the world, also saving performance. Uh, and of course, if you wanted uh, all of these guys to spawn really, really quickly, you can make the spawn delay something like 0.1. Um, and as soon as I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, play here, as soon as you click play and you overlap the trigger, you'll see that all these guys are now spawning very, very quickly. They're obviously running away. Uh, but you get the idea. 
so yeah um, there is uh, probably one more thing I want to add to the to the enemy spawner which again I had on the arcade space shooter template and that is the ability to randomly spawn an animal uh, shouldn't be too hard so obviously here you have two different classes you have a female you have a male uh, I want to add options for you to say you know what why don't you spawn a random enemy out of these two instead of just doing it sequentially I want you to spawn a random enemy uh, and that way you can even have some variety so every time your player plays a section of your map a random animal will appear and they'll do whatever they need to do right so maybe you have different species of animals and one time when the player is going through an area uh, only one of them spawn and may maybe if they have to backtrack the animals are different that time uh, so just another way of adding variety to your game uh, and adding uh, considerations for performance Again, if you have a massive world, you may not even want to load animals that are far, especially if it's like a, um, a linear level. You just drop your spawners with uh, triggers. You can make the trigger as big as you want. And as the player is going through your level, it's automatically uh, triggering the spawners and, and having the enemies uh, trigger. Uh, and when the, uh, when the player goes far, the animals will automatically deactivate uh, and stay in the world. So, yeah. Uh, hope you like where this is going. Let me know what you think if you have any other ideas. Uh, right now, I am almost close to uh, calling it uh, quits as far as new features and trying to add multiplayer and polish. I pretty much ticked everything I wanted on my list of features, but I always wanted to add some spawners because I know this is uh, really, really useful. So I'd love to hear what you think. If you have any ideas, let me know. Uh, leave a comment. And uh, yeah. I will talk to you in the next video. Thanks a lot.